So I'm Kaya, I'm the caretaker here at River Road Farm. We're up here right now in our storage area. Yeah. My name is Ian, so sit at River Road. Uh, as you can see, we have some onions hanging up here. Um, and we're here today to talk about squash. Mm. <clears throat> um, so we'll start with spaghetti squash. Uh, this lovely little yellow one. Uh, this is the first year that we've grown it at River Road in quite some time. So if you're a CSA member, um, this might be a new one for you. Uh, so, spaghetti squash. Um, this is a great one to use um, for all sorts of things. The inside of it is um, going to be a little bit stringier, a little more grainy. Um, a little bit wetter than a lot of the other squashes. Um, a lot of people like to use it in place of noodles. Um, yeah, what else would you say yeah. about spaghetti? So for, I mean, for most of the squash, you can use them for like any desserts or anything like that. And this is the one that I would say to not use for a pie because of the texture <laughs> like I was saying. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, kind of they get sweeter when they're kind of golden colored. So they start out kind of uh, almost like manila folder yellow and then they get a little bit more golden and that's kind of the peakness of those. I've heard them kind of dissed a lot. This is Genevieve by the way in the background because they're not as flavorful as the other squash and that often people it's more of like the texture this the, the fact that you can substitute it for squash for honestly pasta. Would agree. I'd say at flavor wise it's probably at the bottom of our uh, squash like the pecking order for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, for a lot of people that are gluten-free or don't eat grains, it can be a really nice substitute, similar to zucchini noodles, where you kind of get that noodle sense, but not actually eating pasta. Um, but I would also agree that spaghetti squash is probably my least favorite. Um, still delicious, though. Still delicious, yeah. Uh, we don't have any that are ripe right now. We just took these out of our field last week. Um, so right now we're uh, curing all of these, which basically means that we're letting them, um, the excess moisture kind of dry out of them through the stem uh, so that they will stay longer. They'll keep better. Um, if you properly store squash in cool, dark environments that are pretty dry, um, they should last you, what would you say? Upwards of a few months. I've been eating some of my delicata in the early spring. I'm still mm -hmm. eating them if they're <clears throat> yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, so potentially five months or so. Uh, okay, that is spaghetti squash. Next we have buttercup. Um, so this one, there's a little trick to these. This has a cork stem, whereas you can see the spaghetti squash has kind of a thinner stem to it. Um, and so with buttercup and um, sunshine here, uh, with these cork stems, you can tell when they are kind of at their peak ripeness and ready to eat when the stems have fully dried out. Yep, and they usually kind of just break off then too when you're testing them, the mm -hmm. stem will just snap right off. And... I don't know if you can see very well, but there's still quite a lot of green here on the stem, and I can kind of mush it a little bit. Um, you can see that there's some green on the inside, so eventually these will become all dry and brittle. And then that is kind of where it's at its peak sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite thing to do with butter? Uh, the buttercup and sunshine are probably the ones I end up making the most desserts with, I'd say, out of all of them. Uh, they also just they cook and freeze nice too, so I mean that's another thing. If you don't have a dry storage space, you can... The, we were, when we cut them, I usually cut it in half this way and leave the skin on and just roast it in my oven until it's soft enough to fork, uh, fork through, and then, yeah, you can just scoop it right out of the skin mm -hmm. right there. And so that's one thing we were talking about earlier is that a lot of people um, like to peel their squash, but I think that that's really, it's a really challenging step. Um, I've also, I've cut myself trying to peel things and I know a lot of other people have. So 
I have. (laughs) So like Anna was saying, you really don't have to peel it unless you're wanting it like in specific cubes, I guess. Even then, 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 it's pretty easy to like kind of cut it into little squash cubes mm -hmm. pretty easily on the skin. So yeah, rather than trying to peel it, we would recommend just cutting it in half and then roasting or baking it. Another trick is to always kind of pop your stems off because they're like really hard to cut through, if not impossible sometimes with a bad knife. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, on a lot of these, if you pop the stem off, you're going to have a really nice flat surface here to lay your squash on, um, which will make it a lot safer to cut because these are definitely pretty hard to cut through. Um, Genevieve, you were asking about cutting squash, so uh, it's a, you just want to do it with a lot of caution, but I usually, um, you know, have it sitting here and then poke a knife into it as best as possible, move my hand to the opposite side, and then really (laughs) gently but firmly kind of like wiggle the knife down until it starts to cut. And once you get a little bit of a cut in there, it should start going a little bit easier. Yeah, it's nice to have that groove at the beginning to kind of hold the knife into place when you're doing it. Mm-hmm. I have a cleaver and I would never cut a squash with anything else because mm-hmm. it's so it's so perfect for cutting squash and if it gets stuck halfway through I can just kind of smack it on my cutting board and it'll, be, it'll pop off. But it's nice with the cleaver, if you all are familiar, it has nice rounded edges that you can put your hand on and not worry about cutting mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. That's smart. Genevieve, you were talking about having a little like rubber mallet, mm-hmm. which is a nice way that you can kind of help get the knife into there to start it yeah. out. Yeah, but as, as, as with anything you're cutting with, with a sharp knife, just watch out where your fingers are, you know, and like just imagine the <laughs> knife went all the way through. Don't have anything underneath that you don't yeah. want to be cut. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like we were saying, like finding a flat part to put yeah, the squash on. Yeah. Um, so unlike the spaghetti squash, these ones have a um, a little bit of a drier meat, and I don't think dry is even the right word. The spaghetti squash just can be like pretty. Just, yeah, it just, just has a lot of moisture. A little yeah. more moisture. So, and then this one's um, gonna be like a little bit more meaty mm-hmm. than the spaghetti yeah, squash. Yeah, but it's, it's like I was saying, uh, just the texture-wise, it's good for like desserts and it's good for soups even. Mm-hmm. There's some squashes that are better for soups, just with smaller granules. But mm-hmm. in my opinion. You can use anything except for the spaghetti squash for like a soup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you feel like make a pretty funky, fun soup mm-hmm. with spaghetti squash. <laughs> yeah, <though>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you know what I'm saying, um, a lot of people think that pumpkins are the only thing to use for desserts, but mm. um, these can definitely serve as in place to make pies. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I will also mention we have four different people watching right now. If you guys have questions, feel free to type them in the comments and I can ask them for you. Sunshine, um, pretty similar to the buttercup. Again, uh, the stem, once it starts to dry out, once these are cured well, the stem will be pretty. See, again, you can see this is a little bit squishy and there's still some green on it. Mm -hmm. Um, So once the stem is really dry and corky, um, you'll know that it's good to go. Mm -hmm. I think that's my favorite one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But the color of it is just really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it tastes pretty similar to the buttercup. Yeah, I honestly treat them both very, very similarly. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, Greg had mentioned this uh, to us before, but it's a nice portion size too for sometimes with the squ- smaller squashes like the delicata, you don't, you're not going to use that to make a dessert because there's just so, there's not a whole lot in there. So this right here is like enough for one maybe two people to eat, you know, mm-hmm. whereas that, that's going to make like a full pie and you'll probably have some leftover, mm-hmm. right. which another, again, a really nice thing to do if you're kind of overwhelmed with them is just to cook it and then have like pretty much pumpkin squash puree in your freezer that you can mm-hmm. get out and put into stuff and it's, mm-hmm. it's great. Cool. Yeah. It's just good to have on hand. Yeah. And would you guys re- recommend cooking it before you freeze it? Yeah. I've never, yeah. I've never frozen raw, so I don't. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I haven't either. How that would go. Yeah. I don't know how yeah, I'm imagining it would just get freezer burnt more easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and again, it's it's just gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to chop it all up into right. The freezer. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Into yeah, size to freeze it with. This one is a sweet meat. It's a variety of blue Hubbard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
we treat both of these pretty similarly as well. So we have the Chiogia. And both of these get better. Peak is December, right? When they get to the yeah. flavor. They're mm -hmm. so big, so it takes a little bit longer for these to really get that sweetness. So they sit in your basement until December, and that's when they taste yeah, the yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Or your closet, or whatever you got. Whatever it is. Yeah, one word about storing things, whether it's squash or onions or potatoes, um, you just want to make sure that it's in a pretty dry environment, keeping mm -hmm. it out of the light, um, cool enough. Uh, and, you know, if you check on it uh, fairly frequently, you'll be able to tell if it's too humid in your closet or basement mm -hmm. or if it's too warm because things will start to get funky. So. Yeah. Or if one of those has gone bad and you need to weed it out. Yes, yeah. that's the, another good A big perk about one of these, though, is to say it had, like, a bad spot right here. I mean, you could cut it and still eat the rest mm -hmm. of it. It doesn't. It's it kind of spreads. So if you catch it early enough, you mm -hmm. still can salvage some. Yeah. And, we took some funky ones out of the field and were able to like chop off the bad parts and we got it to the Pavarella really quick so they can turn it into something mm -hmm. really cool. quick. Yeah. I think that's just another good thing to know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, fun internet fact for this one. <laughs> uh, I've heard this is originally what they used for gnocchi and so instead of potatoes they used squash because that's just what grew around there at the time and that's originally what this uh, old world crop was used for. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah. I mean, this is something that like, you know, people would have used to feed their family right. well into the winter. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is a yeah. hefty, hefty thing. Yeah. Same, same with both of these. Mm -hmm. And gnocchi is something that you could make, I mean, you could use a whole squash to make a bunch of it and freeze it. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's a big key to, if you're ever feeling overwhelmed with some of your CSA share stuff is to just figure out ways to either can it or freeze it. Um, most of the stuff that we're giving out can be frozen. Yeah. So um, if you have any questions about that, you can ask your CSA farmers about that. Yeah, because both of these, I mean, these are this is a lot of food in both of these. There's yep. not a lot of seeds in here, and when you walk out, you're still getting a good 10 pounds of, mm -hmm. of food. So that's quite a bit for any meal, unless you're just making a soup, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think most CSA members are pretty intimidated by the size. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. And that's, honestly, when it comes to just having, like, bags and then you can just roll them up and get them kind of airtight and throw mm -hmm. them in the freezer and mm -hmm. it's perfect because yeah they'll last for months that way even longer than just on your in your closet or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i would say the taste and texture is somewhat similar to one of these yeah 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 it's sort of again that uh a little bit more hearty meatier uh a little bit drier flesh mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and, uh, all right yeah. My favorite. I think this Mine is too. A, a lot yeah. of people's favorite is the delicata. Yeah. Uh, which, this one is really good because the, the skin, you could eat the skin and it, it just kind of saves down a little bit extra work. Yeah. I've also made a lot of pies with this when I had excess delicata and, mm -hmm. you know, everyone mm -hmm. just thinks I used a pie pumpkin, you know, yeah. and I just yeah. let them think it. But this is, yeah, just a <clears> great. Uh, yeah, just a word. Don't eat any of these skins. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've made that I think I've made that mistake of you know having like a little bit left over and, mm -hmm. or like scooping a little bit of skin out and it's just so tough and it is. kind of yeah. sharp um, but these I love eating these skins yeah if you roast it up it's they're just like pretty tender and um, Greg the manager here at River Road farm director uh, he really likes to cut them in half scoop the seeds out and then you can stuff them with meat or vegetables or yeah Whatever. And these are actually kind of a little bit on the big side for delicata. Mm -hmm. We have some that are probably half the size, and they're kind of just perfect for like a one-person meal on the go. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't have to think very much. I can make a little rice and then just cook up a delicata. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good meal for myself. Mm -hmm. you know? I think my favorite way of doing them is if you cut them in half, and then you can cut them into oh, sort yeah. of half-moon shapes, and mm -hmm. then lay those on a cookie sheet. Um, I like to use coconut oil because it's a little bit sweet, but you can use whatever sort of oil and then just salt. And it's just like, I don't know, yeah. it's the best thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's Delicious. about it for, that is about it the for our squash. The winter squash at River Road. Yeah, I don't think cool. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for doing that. I do have one last question, and that is if you could talk a little bit about what you like about working here, what inspires you about your work here? Uh, a big part of farming for me is just having access to so much food. Um, I love eating, and so 
uh, during the harvest time and during when CSA is really in full swing and we have so much produce here, I just feel really inspired to cook a lot and to eat all sorts of different stuff. Um, yeah, I love vegetables. Um, and along those lines, I think one of my favorite parts about farming is just really being in touch with the seasonal flow of things. And um, as it's starting to kind of wind down and get colder and the days are shorter, we've all sort of been entering hibernation mode a little bit um, and getting ready to just kind of hunker down for the winter. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in July or August, it's kind of this like, really energetic manic frenzy um which i love in its own way so cool. that's probably my my favorite piece ian what about you yeah it's so hard to sum it up uh real quickly but i mean the food is a huge thing i spent a lot of times in professional kitchens and inside all the time and it's been nice to come outside and work with food and and learn too i mean the, like greg's been farming at river road for 20 years and it's really fun to talk to him about food preservation and what he's learned the little shortcuts mm -hmm. he's learned over the years and i think that's a, a big part of it for me too but i mean i think looking out here and seeing how close the community garden is to the farm is like yeah, we should go is, peek is, out is, there is a great part of this site in particular because it is really just i mean what you see on the right is all community gardens and then on the left is all us and we get to see what fun they have on a small scale that we can't always do on the larger scale mm -hmm. and it's, it's fun connecting with the community, and the longer I work for Garden City Harvest, the more I just see people around that I know. Mm -hmm. Cool. Connected in some way or another. I love that. Well, thank you guys so much for taking some time with us. Yeah, yeah definitely.